Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're back at the shop. Another glorious winter day, <laughs> where it's kind of gloomy and looking like snow outside, so it's a good time to get back down here. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I was reloading 38 long Colt cartridges with black powder. And based on some of the comments that I got on that video, uh, I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there about 19th century 38 caliber cartridges and that's understandable uh, there's a lot of bad information that floats around and some misconceptions have been repeated so often that they are taken as fact uh, when in fact they are not and in fact I've even seen some experts repeat some things that are patently not true so it's pretty confusing and uh, I'm gonna try to straighten that out and, and I hope I succeed if I just make it more complicated well let me know in the comments that I blew it but I'm gonna to try to take you through the history of 38 caliber cartridges you know brass cartridges in the late 19th century and um, just give it to you from soup to nuts the earliest 38 caliber metallic cartridges were the cartridges that were designed to be used in cartridge conversions of Remington and Colt principally 36 caliber cap and ball um, revolvers and because of that the dimensions of the cartridges were constrained by the chamber size of 36 caliber cap and ball revolvers okay so that's that's pretty much how we got the cartridges we have now they, they were essentially uh, the paper cartridges shot in those Colts and Remingtons that were just changed over from paper cartridges to brass cartridges. Now, these cartridges came in both centerfire versions and rimfire versions, but except for the priming method, all of the other dimensions were the same. And, and that's because they pretty much had to be. Now, the overall length could vary somewhat. Some of them were a little bit longer, some of them were a little bit shorter, but they all tended to fall in pretty much uh, the same size range. And, and that was largely dictated by the Colt Navy revolver, eventually and the length of cartridges that could take in the cartridge conversions. Uh, but originally there might have been some longer cartridges around because the Remington navies had a longer cylinder than the Colts did. So you might see some variation early on. Um, typically you didn't because Remington also had some short cylindered revolvers like Remington Police uh, that was converted pretty extensively to fire 38 rimfire cartridges. So these cartridges were designated 38 center fire and 38 rim fire and the dimensions uh, were pretty much were pretty much fixed and basically they are what became the 38 short colt cartridge okay uh, which is so similar to the 38 long colt cartridge we'll we'll talk about that in a minute but there was no at this time there was no 38 short Colt or long Colt designations. It wasn't even a 38 Colt designation. All right, they were designated 38 rim fire and 38 center fire. And uh, basically they shot a 375 inch heel base bullet that was loaded into brass cartridges that were uh, 0.377 inches in diameter. And they ranged in length from 0.75 to 0.88 inches and their max overall length was an inch 32 okay 1.32 inches okay so that's pretty much what all of the early cartridges look like and they were shot in a variety of cartridge conversions now then we get into the 38 Colt cartridges and Mind you, uh, this is where some of the misconceptions comes in. So Frank Barnes, in his book Cartridges of the World, says the 38 Colt was developed in 1875 as a cartridge for the use in Colt's new line revolvers, new police revolvers, and new house revolvers. 
I don't think that's correct. In fact, I don't see how it can be correct. Uh, the caliber designation on those guns is not 38 Long Colt. It's just 38. Right? 38 centerfire or 38 rimfire. That's it. Uh, in fact, when you get to the 1877, you know, the Colt Lightning double action revolver, all that says on the barrel is 38 DA. It doesn't say 38 Long Colt. So there was no designation for 38 Long Colt at that time or 38 Short Colt. And, and I'm going to tell you, those designations didn't come along until, as far as I can determine, 1892. Okay? Uh, but that doesn't mean that the cartridge changed. Okay, what is essentially the 38 Short Colt cartridge was the 38 cartridge that was most used uh, by Colt and by Remington uh, and by some other companies. And those dimensions are the same as the 38 Short Colt. You've got the 375 heel base bullet, the 0 0.88 inch long case, right, that's uh, 3.377 inches wide at the base, at the mouth. Um, and it used to fit in the cartridge conversions, and now it fits in all sorts of Colt and Remington revolvers and single-shot pistols. And it's just called the 38 centerfire, or 38 rimfire at this point, because there's still rimfire versions of it that are being made. Okay, quite simple. So you'll find, and, and like I said, this, you'll find these in both Remington and in Colt. And, and that's because Remington developed their own 38 caliber cartridge for cartridge conversions. But by necessity, it was exactly the same as the, the cartridge that Colt developed. Because the conversion cylinders chambers were the same size. Okay, so when Remington went on and they developed their Remington Smoot new model number no. 3 revolver, it was chambered for the same round as chambered for 38 centerfire, not 38 Remington or 38 short Colt or long Colt or even 38 Colt, just 38 centerfire. So that's what it was. But 38 centerfire is the same as 38 short Colt, same cartridge. Now, in 1892, what changed? Well, pretty simply, what changed is that the government adopted a new Colt 38 caliber pistol as the standard pistol for the military. And that was the, uh, the new model Army and Navy revolver. And it was in 38, uh, 38 centerfire. But the problem the government had with the 38 centerfire was that it had a heel-based bullet, which was outside lubricated, and it picked up grit and, you know, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and they wanted a more modern inside lubricated bullet. So Colt developed that for him. So they lengthened the case to 1.03 inches and they developed a hollow based bullet that could be seated in that case. So the case had to be longer to keep the powder charge the same. Okay. Uh, but now we've got a longer case but the same overall length as the 38 Colt. So that's when the 38 Long Colt designation first crops up. And by the turn of the century, you see commercial ammunition makers labeling their ammo 38 Long Colt or 38 Short Colt. All right, I've never seen a gun that had 38 Short Colt uh, labeled on its barrel. But uh, you do find ammo boxes now that are 38 short Colt, and those are the old heel-based outside lubricated bullets. Now, Colt did the hollow base bullets because uh, it kept its chambers and it kept its barrel bores exactly the same on the new model Army and Navy as they had on all the older guns. And those were 3.375 inch bores and chamber mouths. But because they're using a hollow base bullet, it would expand to grab that rifling, so it worked out. So it could still be shot with the old guns or with the new guns. All right, so that's Colt was covering all of its bases. So now we've got the 38 
long colt, the 38 short colt. Those used to be the 38 centerfire. So that 38 long colt cartridge with the um, the 1.03 inch case that was 0.377 inches in diameter. That, of course, was used on the new model Army and Navy revolver, right? And it was it was very commercially produced. And that cartridge eventually led to the 38 Special cartridge, which was lengthened from 1.03 inches to 1.18 inches long, but the same case diameter. So if you had a 38 Special gun, you could fire um, 38 Long Colt in it. It would chamber, chamber just fine. They were the same family of cartridges. And in fact, in 1935, that same case was lengthened again, and it became the 357 Magnum revolver. It grew another tenth of an inch, and it became the high-pressure, high-velocity, uh, high-stopping power cartridge of its day, all the same family. So 38 8 centerfire and 38 rimfire, 38 short colt, 38 long colt, 38 Special and 357 Magnum are the same family of cartridges and they are fully interchangeable up, uh, not fully interchangeable down. And if, if, you're, if you're a military logistics guy, uh, you'll know what that means. But essentially it means if you have a 357 Magnum revolver, it will chamber 357 Magnum, 38 Special, 38 Long Colt, 38 Short Colt, etc., etc. I might actually have a problem with the 38 short Colt uh, because now we make the chamber throats 3.57 inches instead of uh, uh, 0.375, it's 0.357 and the bores are 0.357. Uh, but if you're using the hollow based ammunition, it fits right in. Not a problem at all. And if you've got the 38 Special, you can't put 357 Magnum in it, but you can put 38 Long Colt in it. Okay, and so on and so forth. And if you've got the 38 Long Colt, you can put 38 Short Colt in it, but you can't put 38 Special and you can't put 357 Magnum because they're too long. And that's so the additional power cartridges won't blow up the older guns. But that's all the same family of cartridges. Well, I think that's all pretty much widely understood, right? But the cartridge that seems to throw everybody for a loop in this discussion is the 38 Smith & Wesson. And a lot of people assume that this is interchangeable with the 38 Short Colt or with the 38 Special, that it's somehow related to that. And I'll, I'll get to that later because there's a reason people assume that, and that's really Smith & Wesson's fault. But basically, the 38 Smith & Wesson was developed by the Smith & Wesson Company in 1876 for their single action first model revolver, also called it was a, the 38 caliber single action first model revolver, also called the Baby Russian. Okay, so this was a spur trigger five shot revolver that was chambered for their new cartridge, the 38 Smith & Wesson. Now the 38 Smith & Wesson uses an inside lubricated bullet, more modern than the 38 Short Colt in that regard. Uh, but other than that, it looks a lot like a 38 Short Colt. The problem is, it is a completely different size. It's fatter than the 38 Short Colt. So you can't chamber this in guns chambered for 38 Short Colt or 38 Long Colt or 38 Special or any of those things, because it won't go in because the, the case is a little bit thicker. The 38 Smith & Wesson was a hugely popular cartridge during the 19th century because a lot of the makers of small pocket pistols copied Smith & Wesson's act. So Smith & Wesson made spur trigger revolvers, uh, which everybody was making at the time, like the baby Russian, and then they went to uh, like the early DA models, which had regular and closed triggers with trigger guards, right? 
Uh, they were all brake top guns, top brake guns. And they chambered them for these 38. Small 38 meant they could have a short cylinder, very concealable, five shots mostly. Well, everybody copied that, right? Hopkins and Allen copied it. Ivor Johnson copied it. Um, you name it. If it was somebody who was making small pocket pistols, they copied that design. And most of them used the 38 Smith & Wesson instead of the 38 Colt uh, as their cartridge because it was inside lubricated, it was cleaner, you know, it was felt to be a more modern design at the time. So it was used very extensively in the 19th century, but it became an evolutionary dead end. This did not develop into the 38 Special. Uh, it was used in the 20th century, and in fact, famously, it was used by Webley in their Mark IV uh, top brake revolver that replaced the 455 Webleys after World War I, and it was a 200 grain bullet, um, and they called it the 200 38, but it was a Smith and Wesson bullet case with a very heavy bullet. And it was used by the military, and when they, when they dropped it, it was still extensively used by British Commonwealth police forces, and you can probably still find it on some British Commonwealth police forces, you know, and kind of in the boondocks. Uh, so it had a long life after that, but it never developed into anything new. Uh, but that's where people get confused. So this takes us to the 38 Special, the most popular cartridge for probably three quarters of the 20th century. And it barely makes it into our list of 19th century 38 caliber cartridges because it was developed in 1899. And it was developed for uh, the first model military and police revolver, which evolved into Smith & Wesson's current Model 10 revolver. Now, the reason the 38 Special came about is because the Army considered the 38 Long Colt to have been an abysmal failure during the Philippine insurrection. Uh, particularly against the Moro tribesmen, who were fanatics. And it was just found that the 38 Long Colt did not have enough stopping power to stop those Moro tribesmen. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know that anything would have, okay? But the 38 Colt was the gun on the scene, so it was the one that, uh, that failed. But the Army actually brought out of storage its old single-action army in 45 Colt and put that in the soldiers' hands, and then they developed a double-action uh, 45 Colt, um, the predecessor to the new service, uh, that they put in place as well, specifically to, to fight in the insurrection because 38 Long Colt failed. So they went to Smith & Wesson and they contracted with them to design a new cartridge and a new revolver, but they stipulated that it had to be an improvement on the 38 Long Colt, but they basically wanted the same kind of revolver, 38 revolver. And what Smith & Wesson developed was this, the uh, 38 Special for the Model 10. And to do that, they extended the case of the 38 Long Colt uh, from 1.03 to 1.18 inches long. Uh, so it could handle about five more grains of black powder, which gave it about another 150 feet per second. But very quickly, by 1902, they had changed it over to a smokeless powder round, uh, which was considerably more powerful than the 38 Long Colt. Now, would the 38 Special have stopped a Moro tribesman? I honestly don't think so. <laughs> and, and I don't really think the Army thought so either because they were back looking at 45s uh, when they went to their trials for semi-automatic pistols in 1907, right? So, so I think that this, is, this was something that was never destined to be successful. But it went on to be remarkably successful in the civilian and law enforcement market. So go figure, right? Now, the question always has been, uh, why does this get confused with the 38 Smith & Wesson? And that's because when Smith & Wesson developed the 38 Special, they called it the 38 Smith & Wesson Special, 
which led people to believe that it was the same as the 38 Smith & Wesson or that it was a longer 38 Smith & Wesson and they were interchangeable. Uh, neither of those is true. Uh, they actually based it on the 38 Long Colt, so it's part of that family of cartridges. Now why do they do that when they had their own perfectly uh, capable 38 Smith & Wesson cartridge that they could have just lent them themselves? Um, I don't know for sure, but my guess is that the government contract they got specified that dimensionally it had to be the same width as the Colt, um, uh, as the 38 Long Colt. And that's why they did that, because otherwise there's no reason for them to have used that, that shell. There's no real ballistic reason. Uh, they could certainly have developed the, the new Army and Navy gun around a lengthened 38 Smith & Wesson cartridge, but they did not. Uh, but the fact that they called it the 38 Smith & Wesson Special confuses people all the time. And, and I'll, I'll see old guns marked like that and people will be scratching their heads and, and they will ask me, does that mean it's a 38 Smith & Wesson? No. Uh, it is a 38 Special. And once Colt got in the game, they didn't want to use the name Smith & Wesson, so they just used 38 Special and everybody picked that up. And that's what we know it as today, the 38 Special. And of course this went on to be developed, also by Smith & Wesson, into the 357 Magnum. So to illustrate the difference between the 38 Smith & Wesson and the 38 Smith & Wesson Special, all right, I've got a gun, this is a Colt Official Police, and it's chambered for 38 Special. I know it's not a 19th century gun, but I'll show the difference. So, 38 Special goes right in, no problem, right? But when I take a 38 Smith & Wesson, it does not chamber. You can see it's, it's simply too wide. And that's the difference between those two rounds. Now if I take a gun like this, Harrington Richardson top break, you know, little pocket revolver, 38 Smith & Wesson chambers perfectly. 38 Special will not in this case because it's too long and it hits the forcing cone at the chamber mouth. Alright, so that's the difference between the 38 Smith & Wesson and the 38 Smith & Wesson Special that of course is now called just the 38 Special. All right, that is the, the whole and complete story of 19th century 38 caliber handgun cartridges. Um, I hope it was helpful to you. And if you like the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up so we can mess with the algorithm. And any comments, good or bad, pop them out there. I'm always happy to read them. So until next week, bye.